The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us here at Christ Our Savior Lutheran Church in Holland, Michigan for the whole counsel of God on this December the 3rd. We continue in the book of Revelation. Today we have chapters 14 and 15. Let's hear God's word together and pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Speak, Lord, for your servants here. Please show us now your ways that we may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of our own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us light, O Lord, according to your word, and we shall declare your greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We begin in the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 5. The Lamb and the 144,000. Then I looked, and behold, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him 144,000, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of a loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps, and they were singing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and before the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. It is these who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for God and the Lamb, and in their mouth no lie was found, for they are blameless. So far the word. This reading, which is often assigned in Reformation Day, in this, John relates a vision in which those who have been delivered by the Lamb stand gathered around God's throne, singing a heavenly song of praise. This group, which is described as blameless, differs from the earthly people of God who still slip into sin by defiling, defiling themselves in countless ways. Yet God remains faithful. He forgives when we fail to remain true to him. And that gives us every reason to rejoin, rejoin the saints in praising him. We pray. Heavenly Father, redeem, remind me that you have chosen me to be your own child through the death and resurrection of the unblemished Lamb. Grant my heart joy as I join in singing a new song before your throne. In your name I pray. Amen. We continue now at verse 6. The message of the three angels. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Another angel, a second, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, she who made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day or night. These worshipers of the beast and its image, and whoever receives the mark of its name. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. So far the word. John relates a vision of three angels warning the world against the disaster that will come upon those worshiping the beast. Despite a multitude of such admonitions, people, including those who know better, still chase after false gods. Those who remain faithful to God and his word will be blessed. However, entering into eternal rest when they pass out of this world. We pray, God, I praise you for keeping me united to your Son. Continue giving me strength to withstand all enticements to abandoning the faith. Keep me patient while I await my eternal rest in you. In your name we pray. Amen. 
We continue now the balance of the 14th chapter, beginning at verse 14, the harvest of the earth. Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and seated on the cloud, one like a son of man, with a golden crown on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple, calling with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Put in your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So he who sat on the cloud swung his sickle across the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, the angel who has authority over the fire, and he called with a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, Put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle across the earth and gathered the grape harvest of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden outside the city and blood flowed from the winepress as high as a horse's bridle for 1600 stadia. So far the word. John describes the final judgment in terms of a harvest and treading of a winepress. Those in Christ need not worry over God's wrath. For instead of your blood flowing from God's winepress, Jesus' blood was poured out from the cross for you. His sacrifice for your sin removes the penalty of eternal death from you. We pray. O oh Lord Jesus, I thank you for suffering the wrath that I deserved. Though you were innocent and I was guilty, you shed your blood for me, thus washing all my sins away. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We continue now into chapter 15. The seven angels with seven plagues. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and amazing. Seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with them the wrath of God is finished. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire. And also those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. After this I looked in the sanctuary of the tent of the witness, and heaven was opened. And out of the sanctuary came the seven angels with the seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, with golden sashes around their chests. And one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls, full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the sanctuary was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one could enter the sanctuary until the seven plagues of the seven angels were finished. So far the word. The present vision begins with a scene of joyous celebration, but then continues with a description of the angels bearing the seven last plagues of God's wrath being sent out. Unfortunately, that is how things typically are during the church's earthly sojourn. The most sublime moments of rejoicing are followed by dreadful calamities, and hope is ever threatened by evil and judgment. Given the sad state of affairs, the church needs to hear over and over and over again that there is, as is spoken in Romans 8, 1, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we sing your praises every day. Come what may, for you have done great and amazing things. We thank you especially for making us your people and so removing from us any fear of the impending wrath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue on the Pray for Us calendar on this third day of December that the people of God would be faithful in their attendance of the divine service. And in the divine service is where God strengthens our faith toward him and our steadfast love toward one another. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts.
in your own time, grant to them healing according to your will and sustain them until the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O oh Lord, and whatever else you know that we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>